and welcome to the shed. In today's video we're going to be making some changes and some corrections to this cheap Stanley hand plane to turn it into a quality daily user. Hope you enjoy. So the very first thing I did was just take the hand plane apart and just use some denatured alcohol and some 4 knot steel wool and just cleaned off some of those uh, film finishes on the blade, the chip breaker and on the sides of the sole. So now we're ready to get into the, the real modifications and the, the setup. So the first thing I'm going to do is flatten the back of the blade. Now once that's flat we can then work on the chip breaker to make that surface against here. But first we need to make sure that the back of that's the back of the blade is flat. Now obviously I've got videos where I've done that before, but I'm just gonna do a quick run through here to flatten that and it's a pretty quick and simple process really. What I'm looking for is at least probably half a centimeter that's flat on the back here and if you're going to come back and obviously sharpen right through this blade, you might want to get about an inch flat on the back here. So that's what I'm going to aim for, but really to get this operational, you're just looking for a little bit right along the edge. And that's what's really going to make the difference uh, with the mating of the chip breaker, because you only need really that small, like half a centimeter sort of gap or, or five mil. I'm going to have about an inch of it in contact and just put a little grid pattern there like that with the sharpie and whatever lubricant you use on whatever stone you're using obviously this is a, a Toma diamond stone 400 grit so we'll come in like this we'll push it down and we'll start working it back and forwards and as you can see here I've just got contact right across the whole blade so I'm just sort of pushing down on the back of the blade where I'm sharpening and also on the front just to make good contact. So it took me about 20 minutes to flatten the back of that blade. Now obviously I wanted to flatten it right the way across but there was a little twist in this blade so I ended up using what's called the ruler trick and um, I'll leave a link to that below. I'll release that video um, probably next week just so you can see exactly what to do with that but just so you know it's it's a ruler on one side of the blade that sort of lifts it up and puts a little bit of a back bevel allowing you to get a good sharpening right on the very edge of your blade whether you've got twists and things like that so now the back of the blade is flattened we need to now work on the chip breaker and that requires leveling and flattening out the edge here and also smoothing out the top here to allow the shavings to go up over the top of it and we want a nice sharp edge like right on this edge of this chip breaker and at the moment it's it's fairly blunt so the first process i'm going to use is resting the chip breaker right on the edge of the stone so it's going to rest right on the edge of the stone here and i've got another video which i'll leave a link below to where i went into more detail on that so um, i really suggest you check that one out to get a really good understanding i'm just going to brush the surface here as we're just trying to get this plane back into an operational order so i use the back of the blade here because that's the side that's facing down when you're using the hand plane so you don't see any scratches because it will leave a few marks there we go like that and this is ju just happens to be the right angle when we're like this and and so i've pinched my fingers up just off the stone here and that's kind of acting as a bit of a guide to stop it from sliding too far in now this is not a process i'd try on a softer stone uh, you could, but then you're going to have to flatten your stone because you will gouge it out doing this. So you want a nice hard stone. So if that's not a natural stone or a diamond stone, I think oil stones are much firmer or harder. But then you're going to have to adjust your angle uh, because these are nice and thin. This is actually the right thickness to drop onto the back of the blade to get the right angle on the back of the chip breaker. So we can see here that it's smooth at this end and a little rough right through. So what we're going to be looking for is a nice smooth metal up it to the edge of that chip breaker and you will feel a burn on this side here which we'll remove in the later process. So I'm going to go ahead and do this and then I'll get back to you. So uh, flattening along the bottom of the chip breaker edge there took a little bit longer than I expected. That took about 15 minutes. Uh, the machining was just had a big groove on one side so I just had to keep going until that was gone and it was brought right to the edge. But if you have a look now, you can see that it's nice and smooth to that edge. So now that that's done, we've got to work on this side of the chip breaker here and smooth that up so we get a nice sharp mating edge right on the edge of the chip breaker here. 
So I've got my stones just set up here. Uh, you could use your softer stones for this. I still think that the diamond stones are best. So we'll keep them wet. And we're just going to hold it on this angle. And you're sort of working up and down on this rounded part here. So you can already see that the little bits just come off those with the few, those few pushes. But what we're looking to do is smooth this and make a nice sharp connection between this flat plane on the bottom and the curved plane on the top that comes down. So you're moving it up and down on that round and you're sort of just keeping your pressure with your finger on it like this. You can see as we're working this that we're starting to smooth this edge out here. Uh, it doesn't matter if this is not 100% smooth, but what you really want is this edge here making a nice connection. Now obviously, smoothing as much of this out is good, but if the machining's bad enough that you can't actually touch all that without removing a lot of material, you don't really want to remove that much material. But I can already feel a bear under here, and you can see that we're shiny here, which means we have got right to that cutting edge, and that's what counts. So I'm just going to smooth a little bit up on the top here a little bit more and then move through the grits. So now we've flattened the back of the blade, prepared the chip breaker, we now want to see how we've done and if we still have a gap as I mentioned in the last video between the chip breaker and the back of the blade. So to do that I need to reassemble the blade assembly. So we put the screw back into the back of the chip breaker cross it across like this, slide it up, bring it round. We're gonna push it up so it's about a millimeter back from the edge of the blade. Pull that screw up. Make sure our chip breaker is sitting square and even across the blade. So on these they're the same thickness as the blade so you can just adjust it and make sure that's square. And we wanna crank that screw up as tight as it can go. Now we want to look back up at that light again. We want to look for that gap between the chip breaker here and the back of the blade. But you're looking through the little gap here. Now, I've not found a way to show you that on camera. It never comes up right. So you're just going to have to do that for yourself. Check for the light. And in this case, we're all good. So we're going to move on to flattening the frog. We don't really need full contact right the way through. Really, you just need two points of contact to make this work. And that's smooth contact along here and smooth contact along up the top here. Now I already know when we checked in the last video, and I'll link that below if you didn't see where I uh, just did an unboxing and review of this plane, that we had, I believe this side was out by a millimetre and this one was like half a millimetre. So we, we do have a little bit of discrepancy here. But since you can see that we have big gaps here and we just don't have a lot of solid metal through, we don't need full contact but we want as much smooth contact as we can get. So we want that lateral adjuster out of the way. We also want the handle to stay out of the way up here. So I push it to one side and then I angle the frog a little bit. So it's actually, if you look here, it's coming across. If we look on this side here, it's coming across more than halfway. And that's actually a good thing because it helps to sort of level it out through the middle. And you can take your adjuster here off, but there's no real reason to. And we just move it back and forwards. And you also want to make sure that you're not actually hitting your little yoke adjuster here as well. So we can see both of these sides are a little uh, are out quite a bit. So we kind of want to work that until we remove a fair amount of that just to try and get it flat up to about here and sort of through to here so we have a better reference. So I'm going to go ahead and work that and get back to you once I've got it where we where I think we need it. As you can see here we've got the flat here. This side actually got a little up here which is good. But I've got it pretty much flat to this point here and flat up through here, which means we're referencing in these two points. And you could go further, but there's no real point. 
there's no need unless you really want to and you've got the time to do it you can do but this is going to perform perfectly like this the next thing is to reassemble this plane and in doing so uh, any of these bare metal areas where you've rubbed it against the stones you want to coat them with either some paste wax or oil uh, machine oil some sort of rust inhibitor So now we've got the plane reassembled, we're going to flatten the sole and that's pretty much the last thing that needs to be done to this. So what I've got here, any flat surface will do. I'm just using a piece of melamine, I've never had a problem with it. Some people say it's not flat enough, but I've found that it's always flat enough to flatten the sole of a plane. And you don't have to have really, really accurate uh, flatness in your sole of your planes. That's just more of a modern thing where machinists have got a hold of them and they really want them down to the nth degree and if you're buying a premium plane they will be 100% flat but to get the job done it doesn't really need to be as long as it's mostly flat so we're going to use the sandpaper that's held down here with some double-sided tape you need spray adhesive if you want and uh, flatten the bottom of the plane so when it comes to flattening the sole of the plane key areas we want flat we want it as far as we can get right behind the mouth and just in front of the mouth. Now, as much of this area here flat is good because that becomes your reference. And when it comes down to the back, as long as you have the majority of these edges and a little bit along here flat, you're gonna be okay. You don't really need all of this area in here flat, but as much of this flat here as you can get, the better it's gonna be. So it's just a process of working it back and forwards on the sandpaper, regularly checking it and seeing where you've got material missing now normally i would just put a, a grid pattern on like this and it just gives you a, a good bearing as to which areas are flat and which ones are not before we start with this you want to make sure your blade is fully retracted into the sole and you do really want the plane to be fully assembled like i've got it here not only does that give you the handles to hold on to which makes it easier for pushing it also means that if there is any flexible movement in the sole and they may or may not be. It means that it's flexed and under tension where it would be when you're using it. So you're flattening it in the position it will be when you're using it. So when we're doing this, I like to hold it as low down as I can at the back of the tote here, hand over that top handle and just getting that pressure down low. So we're not rent, really wrenching on the handles. We're just down low and we're pushing all the pressure down on the sole. So we can see here that we've started to work it. We're already losing the, the markings down here and just here, and a little bit up the middle here. Now, it's a little bit hard to tell at this stage because the casting is quite rough on the bottom. So we're gonna work this a little bit more before we decide how long it's gonna take. But we're starting to remove it here. We're starting to remove it here. We're removing it down the edges, we're removing it here. So we've got most of the key areas covered. So we'll work this a little bit more and we can see that we're starting to get there. We're removing more here. It looks like we're going to have a fairly flat sole right the way through. We just need to continue to work this until we at least have this here and maybe a little more referencing just in behind the throat here, hopefully. Now you can see as I'm doing this, I'm using every part of the paper. I'm using it 
up and down, side to side. I'm using all of it, but I'm only pushing the sole in this direction, which is kind of the grain of the cast iron. And I know it's a little bit funny saying that uh, metal has a grain, but it does. And that's the best direction to push it. Now, I like to do this dry, but you can certainly, if you're using wet and dry paper or whatever, use a little bit of lubricant to stop this metal dust coming up. I don't find it really gets in the way or is a problem, so that's the way I do it, but that's up to you. So we can see there now that we've got a pretty good reference here, pretty good references up the side. We've referenced flat just in behind the mouth here. It's not right up to it. You could go a little bit more, but this is going to work perfectly fine the way it is. The main places in the front here that you want, a little bit of reference here is nice, but if you've got the references down the side, I've found that the planes work fine. We've taken quite a bit of time and we've brought this plane into a, a position where it should be able to be used. So I went ahead and sharpened the plane blade off camera. Obviously that's a pretty simple process that all of you should already know. If you don't, I'll leave a couple of links below. One to sharpening with the jig and one to sharpening freehand, which is with a chisel but the same techniques apply for the hand plane. We're ready to give this a test. So what I've done here is I've got a piece of piece of uh, pine here in the face. The reason I like to use pine is if there's anything a little bit off, pine is usually the, the wood that's going to catch and get stuck I've found. So let's bring it in here and we'll take a few shavings. I've already eyeballed the blade so we uh, just need to bring it down until we're making contact. We should already have a fairly even All right, so I'm going against the grain there. Let me just turn it around. So as you can see, we're getting, I mean, a moderate shaving there. We can get it much finer. So let's track the blade a little bit. And it's about half the thickness. We can go a little bit finer with this. Too fine. And we've got a paper thin shaving here, which I can actually see light through. And that's enough to do any project you want to do. So there you have it folks. That's how you prepare one of these cheap planes, ready to take some nice shavings and do your day-to-day -day work. While it might not do the very finest of work because it has quite a large mouth, at least you're able to do the majority of your work with a, a relatively cheap plane that you can buy brand new if you can't find any vintage ones or the vintage ones are out of your price range. And if you do end up finding a vintage one that you like more as your, your main smoothing plane, you can always convert the blade on one of these to a scrub plane and then you've got a nice roughing plane to continue working with. Uh, there's one other thing that I would probably do to this plane if I was going to be using it regularly and that is to either buy some wooden handles or make some wooden handles for it as I don't like the feel of the plastic handles. But the, ha the plastic handles do work very well on this plane and although it's built to a cheap price it does everything you could ask it to do with probably only an hour and a half to two hours of work. That is dependent on how flat your blade is and how much work that requires because the chip breaker doesn't take too long to prepare and flattening the frog and the sole is also a relatively quick process. So if you like this video and you'd like to see some more videos like this please check out the video down here where I restore a vintage hand plane We're using those same techniques that you've seen me use today and as always please consider checking me out on Patreon I'm such a small creator, so every little bit of support from you really does help. Bye for now.